This video was initiated by one of our technicians, Jesse, who is a real fan of the Dune books and the first Dune film. So we wanted to find out whether um, it was possible to make a spice from Dune, which has been um, published in the Dune Encyclopedia. I've never heard of Dune and I don't really like sci-fi and I'm not very keen on fiction in general so I'm not really the expert to talk about this. So it's quite a complex molecule we don't know if it can even be made um, we don't know what chemistry went into deciding it before. Is this just a made-up thing on the internet? It is made up right. it's made up um, as part of an extra bit of fiction to go with after the book so it wasn't written by Frank Herbert who wrote the Dune books so we're going to see if it can actually be made by Molly, with Molly Mods because um, there's some interesting bonds in here that the guys have been trying to figure out. Jesse gave me the formula of this compound spice, which quite interestingly is called melange, which those of you who speak French will know means mixture. It sort of implies that it's not a pure compound, but we've treated it as being a single compound. Spice is a chemical which is only found in one planet in the, about 20,000 years in the future and it means that these people called the Guild Navigators can navigate through space and make jumps so tr travel through the Imperium is impossible without the spice. It has a psychoactive effect where um, people can see the future so you've got a bit of prescience coming in there, sci-fi. It's a bit of a mystery. This diagram is called the structural formula. What struck me is that it really looks rather old fashioned. Modern chemists wouldn't draw a structure like this. It looks like something from just after the Second World War in terms of the way it's drawn. A group of our undergraduates decided to make a model of it, led by Jesse. Finn, Albert. Constantina. Zachary. I'm not an organic chemist and the only thing that really struck me was down here with this ring which is called a porphyrin ring and that will become important later. It has two copper atoms in the middle and having two copper atoms is really a bit unusual. First of all because they can't really fit into the standard porphyrin ring and also the only compound that I know that has two copper atoms, naturally occurring one, is a compound called hemocyanin, which is the oxygen carrier in the blood of crabs and I think lobsters. And it's blue. You may not realise that crabs are blue-blooded, aristocratic, but uh, the structure of hemocyanin is quite different from this. This spice is meant to come out of a huge creature called the sandworm. The first thing that I found really unconvincing, unbelievable, was the size of the sandworm because it was so big that it would have collapsed under gravity because presumably being a worm it doesn't have a skeleton and it was far too big to resist the forces of its own weight rather than careering through the desert in the way it was shown. You see, I'm a real spoil sport. The thing that I found most unconvincing was the Baron smoking this spice. It's a very high molecular weight compound and it won't volatilize easily so that you can't breathe in the vapor and if you heated it up I'm sure it would decompose completely. So heaven knows what he was smoking. Perhaps that's why he was bad. They inhale it 
And then the guild navigators, because they need so much of it, they're like these big sort of fish-like mutant beings that will go in this big orange gas tank. So once the model was completed by the students, Brady called our organic expert, Rob Stockman, to come down. We're not telling Rob anything at the moment. And I thought he would poo-poo the whole thing, but he took it really seriously, much more of a sport than me. He was into the game. And he, first of all, got quite excited about some of the features of the molecule. It doesn't want two coppers. He also discovered that the students had made some mistakes on the, I think it was this ring of the porphyrin ring. Rob started saying carbon, double bond, and so on to get the structure done. So is this molecule SOS? And he fixed the structure. Uh, no, we want one carbon on. But even he made a mistake at one stage. So not even professors are perfect. But like me, he did get quite interested in the two copper atoms. In fact, that's how he realised that there was a mistake in the model the way the students had made it. There's some interesting design features in here. You can see all the red over here. These are oxygen atoms. And a lot of those come from sugar, like Moises. And, and biomolecules are often use sugars to enable water solubility, so transport around the body in the bloodstream, for example. So that, that would be what, what design feature came there. Then we've got a, a peptide backbone, and then into, uh, you can see this is more, this pyrrole here should be flat. Because there's two coppers, it's been forced into more of a bowl shape. Talk to me about these two coppers. Every chemist who looks at this yeah. is upset about these coppers. Yeah, well, the, it, the cavity is really small, so these coppers are having to sit... Normally this would be flat and you can't really see, but they're, they're kind of sitting beyond the plane. That would make those really reactive, so perhaps this is the area, the, the reactive part of the molecule that's going to do some electrochemistry and whoever takes it and perhaps that's creating the effect. I don't... I've absolutely no idea. Uh, you don't normally see two coppers together at all. Uh, porphyrins, though, you do see in all sorts of things, usually to do with oxidation chemistry, so in your liver, the cytochrome P450 with an iron atom in there, and that's chewing up molecules, oxidising them, uh, taking them apart. Goodness knows what this would actually do. Uh, in water, I'm sure a copper would fall out and it would be happier again, but um, who knows, really? Uh, so, yeah, and, and here we've got some uh, what looks like, you've heard of polystyrene, well this is a, a monomer of, of that in there, so we've got a bit of man-made uh, in, in the middle of these two biomolecules. So sugars, peptide, oil, <laughs> fossil fuel derived, um, and then a porphyrin, which again is a biomolecule but inorganic chemistry rather than organic chemistry, which is over here. They, they literally looked at a textbook and thought, right, let's take a bit from here, this chapter, a bit from that chapter, and let's stick them all together and uh, see what goes on. But there are, you know, it, there are some in, well-informed choices in there, I think. It's uh, certainly some creativity has gone into this, uh, into this molecule, not least the very imaginative dicuprate species in here. Goodness knows what that would actually do. <laughs> something very satisfying about it. I think all the colours and it's so big and complex. Well, yeah, I wasn't sure what to expect, but it looks pretty good to me. If you're interested in studying or working at the University of Nottingham's School of Chemistry, where you may end up making spice, I'll put a link in the video description so you can find out more. But the real thing that upsets me is that a gallon of HF wouldn't be nearly as enough to dissolve a tough gangster because it gets used up. The HF isn't a catalyst, 